Hey everybody, it's Cole again. Alright, I've had a few requests for this, so I'm going to do a, uh, a shorter video on how to do a couple things in Blender. Uh, as you can see, I'm still on Blender 2.79. I'm actually going to download the newest one and try it out, but for now, this is what I'm working on. Come over here immediately, I'll scroll that down. So this is what you start with, you know, you open your blender, that's what you get. First thing I'm going to do, import obj, go to my file, uh, there, there, I already have one here, but for sake of argument, go to your file that you downloaded, you should have obj and a material. Sometimes your materials are good, sometimes they're absolute junk. This one's absolute junk. There's nothing on this material I'll use. Click import OBJ. Wait a million minutes while it opens. Uh, slower computers, it's going to take a while. Uh, I actually have a really good computer, and it takes a while. Alright, so this is what you'll see after you clock, load your uh, file in. Now, if your model is scaled correctly, you will actually see the model correctly. Let's see here. We'll open up another one. We'll go real fast, real fast. Try and find one. Uh, I have one that is perfectly scaled right here. Um, that's it. You can see all the work I've put into the 2020, and then in that file it says Troy's work. That's because Troy's done some work on that too. That's what you'll see on a perfectly scaled model. That's the way this model came. This block, you can click on it, right click, hit delete tab, uh, delete key, and click delete. Or you can come over here and Stretch this out. Come over here and click on this. Like, highlight it. Left click, and then you come down here off of right click and hit delete on the left click. So, left click, right click, left click. Now the bed's gone. Pretty simple. You know, as you can see, if you, whenever I release my model, you'll see all the amount of work I've done on cutting and redoing parts. So we're going to close that. <clears throat> we're going to go back into, not that one, but this one. All right, so we've already in, imported the file. And as you can see, it's freaking massive. Well, this one's only got one piece. It's one solid model, which means i got to take everything apart. If it was like the Dodge I just showed, you'd have several parts down here. All you have to do is come over here, hit, and hit A, and that highlights everything. Come over here, hide your cubes and your camera and your lamp. Or hide your. <laughs> it's late and I've been drinking. Uh, hide your, your lamp and your camera. Right? So hide those. The cube, you, you can delete it if you want or leave it there for now. And that way, all you have is your parts list. Like I said, this one is one single part with a bunch of mats. So with it being one single part, all I have to do is hit A, just like you have to do if there's tons of parts and you don't see your model. What's what's happened is, let's keep scrolling out on the scroll wheel, move around a little. You can see part of the model up there. There we go. And you can see more of it. It's scaled wrong. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit s for scale and then we're going to type one and hit enter and see that didn't make it any difference so hit s for scale point zero zero one left click and it's scaled down a little too much so we can hit z hit scale 
point zero one enter all right now it's now it's uh <clears throat> it's still too large but it's getting there so we'll hit scale point five enter scale point five enter scale point five enter and there we go now it's somewhere scaled into the factors of where it will come out approximately where we want it in GE and <clears throat> if you get it in game and it's not the size that you want you can scale it in Giants editor and you'll be fine so what I'm one thing that a lot of people have problems with is cutting parts away so if you got one full scale model or you've got one split like the Dodge and you want a piece off of it to be a different color. So like, see this line right here on the blade? If I wanted that line, that bottom piece to be different, like it is here, I'm going to have to cut that bottom piece off and recode it and then or well, retexture it and everything like that. And I'll show you how I did that. So you click on the model. As you can see, it's the whole freaking model. We'll hit edit. Now you'll see everything is lit up. You hit A, everything goes away. I'll come down here and hit my box. Come down here. This is my plow. Click down here. Just click any node you want. Control A. <clears throat> Not Control A. Don't hit Control A. That's the wrong button. It's Control L. Hit Control L. And that'll highlight a big section of things. As you can see, that's the whole plow. So I want to add a few more things to this plow. So I'll Shift and right click. A few more faces hit control L and luckily it grabbed all those and now I want this piece as well because I want this turn style here to be connected to the plow actually no I'm gonna hit control Z because after looking at it they're not connected so what I'm gonna do I've got my I've got my plow pieces that I want all highlighted all the nodes of the characteristic that I want is highlighted. Hit P, selection, and now you can see over here it dropped down. Now I got my blade. Alright, so I want to connect my blade to this turnstile. Come over here, click on the blade, and what we're going to do is reposition the camera. Right now I'm holding shift and I can and pushing down on the the scroll wheel that's giving me the up motion. Now I'm pushing down on just the scroll wheel, scrolling down until I get a nice line of sight here. Now seeing as how this plow is now its own thing, I can move it anywhere I want. So I'm gonna stick it right there. All right, now let's say I don't want that plow sitting sideways. Well, I can hit R for rotate, and then X, Y, or Z to rotate on axes. So Z is going to rotate me this way, and I can rotate it around until I get it to where I want it. And now I can just scroll this back, get it somewhat lined up, where I want it and now it is where I want it <clears throat> but it is not part of this turnstile there's two ways to do this you can note it in GE to where you got the turnstile as one part and then the blade as another part that is attached to it in in GE so Quick example would be want to do uh, put 
pull this up real fast. All right. Quick example of what I'm talking about. Is see my tailgate? My tailgate is several different parts. Come down here, visual, and somewhere here, tailgate. Okay. So that's all my parts. Notice the node is way over here. That's because whenever I make made the we're making the tailgate move, we're not calling this node. We're actually going to be calling this node. Now this is the tailgate skin, the outer yellow skin that I had made on the truck. And how I made it all one piece, which on this one, the node is in the wrong place. I've actually reworked this tailgate, so it's in the correct place, like the tailgate parts are. <laughs> I screwed up and didn't place that one in the right spot. But I got the tailgate parts all in the correct spots. So, basically, if I had done this right, I would be able to be on the tailgate node, which is everything, and rotate everything at one piece. As you can see, the whole tailgate assembly is moving. That's the badges, the, the handle, the inside uh, bed texture, which is bed liner, and the top piece. As I click on them, you can see off of the original tailgate, which was just the skin, to tailgate parts. So I've got these three pieces here underneath my tailgate parts which tailgate parts is I believe the rear skin nope it is do 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 it's one of the one of them nodes oh it's the chrome all right it's the ram logo the limited and the four by four so as you can see, I've got this one noted right. So this piece, the inner tailgate, the top tailgate part, and the handle are all listed underneath this body. So each one is in here. And how I did that was I would put tailgate, and then I cut and pasted all four of these into the tailgate. I then went through and put all the nodes at zero, which on this one they're moved. And in here, put everything on zero and then kind of tweaked it to where I wanted it. As you can see here, those are all zeros. Those are all zeros. And now it moves as one, one functioning piece. Now that would have worked right on that tailgate there. But like I said, I'd screwed it up. So that's how you can do it. Conjoin parts in GE. The other way to do it, no I do not want to save, come back in here to our blender. So I want this blade to be part of this wheel. And I'm going to put this blade and this wheel on the same mat. So the next thing I need to do is I need to come over, get a click on the grader, edit mode, click a node, control L which will highlight everything kind of in that reference area of that node. Click and hold left shift, right click on the next box. Control L. And now I've got all of my turnstile parts here. Well, let's say I want this center piece here not to move. I want this turnstile to move around that center piece. I can do this several ways. I can hit Z, then hit B, which gives me a little thing here. And actually, no, not B. That actually adds more stuff. So let's go back to op. Crap. Back to edit mode. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to select this. Control L. We've got all that. So let's say I don't want that stuff. Uh, I can hit C 
and scroll in and out you can see that wheel that circle getting bigger scroll in a little ways then hit uh, your middle mouse button and it'll erase some of the nodes but as you can see it didn't erase the highlighting oh, damn it Bump. the highlighting of the other nodes the way you can get all the way around the object is hit Z for wireframe mode C and then middle mouse button and then hit the nodes and the little black dots is what you're looking for the center of the faces all right right click when you're done hit Z again and now if you scroll out of that you can see that that section is no longer part of this blade or this turnstile so now we're going to hit P for separation or selection so now I've got two extra nodes down here so if I hide the if I come up here and I had hide the whole grader now I can see the plow and the turnstile so we'll come up here plow turnstile now let's say I want to make them one piece. Let's say uh, plow parts. Okay, so now we've got that titled plow parts. And we want to keep it named plow parts. We can come down here, click this one, which is our turnstile. Come up here, hit plow parts, and then we hit join. And it should click, click, join. There we go. So left, left shift, click both nodes, click, click, and then hit join. If the eyeball is not on, it won't join. Node mesh data to join. So now we've got those pieces. Uh, we'll click on those. We'll come down here to our mesh. As you can see, it's got a bunch of crap in here. I'm going to call my own meshes. So I'm going to make the plow the same plow and everything the same color as the road grader. So I'm going to go down here material main body dot mat. And there we got our main body mat. Come down here. We're just going to select the yellow. Because this is going to change whenever we put it in GE. So it doesn't matter when you select your diffuse color here. So now we've got our turnstile and our plow as one piece. Move up and down. We can move it left and right. And do anything we want with it. Um... And let's say you're looking at it and you're like, oh damn, that's not centered. It's all right. You can you can simply come back in, hit edit, click, 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 control L, and once again, as you can see, they're two separate objects. At one point, it kind of it'll kind of read it. You can hit P and separate it and move the plow again and everything like that. I'm not doing that. I'm leaving it how it is because whenever it turns that gives this front room for the front wheels to turn and the back will fold down back or fold back by the uh, wheels or the rear wheels which are stationary so now we're going to make this piece down here chrome or aluminum or whatever you want so you come down here shift click the the face that you want First, when you get out of edit mode, back into edit mode. See how that's still all lit up up there? Hit A. That gets rid of everything. Highlights everything. Gets rid of everything. So now we're gonna work on this piece. Click it. Hit Control L. Well, it selected the whole front half of the blade. Still left the back parts free, but it selected the whole half of the blade. Well, there's an easy way to get around that. Control Z or hit L again or A again I meant come down here hit your C button and left click 
and you can literally highlight which one uh, which nodes you actually want only problem is you can't zoom in zoom out or pan around as you can see all your pan around buttons and movement controls are functions pulled underneath the sea so you just come around circle all the nodes that you want and you can see there's a little nice little piece right here I could do something fancy with if I wanted to come through here catch all these nodes whoops easy to delete there got all those there's also another option you can hit B and draw a box over everything that you want come down here to your side this is where the C actually works better than the B is B if I went to draw a line I got a chance of hitting this stuff up here if you accidentally highlight something that you didn't want and you're like crap you can hit control Z and take it back and if you accidentally right clicked without holding shift and you lost everything you just did hit control Z you can go right back so I'm going to use the C button again and highlight everything that I want highlighted all right so I've got the front done but I didn't do the back well there's an easy way to do that too you can hit X or uh, Z again I meant and now you can see behind there and you can highlight your nodes at the same time the only downfall of that is is you can if there's anything behind it let's say I'm trying to get this piece right here uh, this line right here on whoops on uh, the blade say I'm just trying to get this section right here and I go C I can collect it no issues but if I hit Z which is wireframe and I do that as you can see whoops I'll do that again as you can see here I hit Z again I've highlighted parts of this so you got to be careful using the wireframe because you can collect parts you don't want to collect because it's wireframe I mean you're looking through everything so we'll come down through here click 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 right click after every function everything you highlight that way you can get back to your moving and for sake of argument I'm not going to go into massive detail on making sure that's perfect hit Z again you can kind of give a, a general overview of what you got going on here you can see if you yeah, like right there I can see I have a an issue if you want to scroll down your panning your panning you can hit Z or, or left shift and you can scroll your panning down I'm gonna unclick on that one which is simple you know uh, go to C center mouse button click down and then it's on highlighted same for that one All right, so now you've got your part highlighted once again. Come over here, kind of pan it to where I don't have to move it too many times here. Hit P. All right, so now we got plow parts and plow parts. 001, rename plow parts metal. Take away the body mat. Now it's gray. Add whatever silver silver dot mat. Come down here. Change my color. Boom. So now I've got two parts on the blade. So whenever I set my geometry node or 
uh, location. So I can right click on this, set origin, I can set it to center of mass. I can set it anywhere you want to. For this one, since I want it to be rotating on a center, the center of this wheel, I can click right where the center of that wheel is because it's not the center of the mass on this one. It's literally the center of this wheel. Um, come over here, set origin to 3D cursor, boom. Now it's going to rotate on that point right there. So, now, uh, that was just an extra little tip there. So I can take this piece, and you see the node followed, but my cursor is still over there because I right-clicked. I didn't left-click. I can also set that to center a 3D cursor. And by doing that, I can stack them in GE the way I showed with the dodge, where I screwed up the tailgate. That's because I left-clicked. Well, let's say you left-click, but you want... You want... Uh, everything to be on that node again and this one is over here but you want it to be on that one you can hit control uh, not control s that's the wrong button you hit s not s give me a second i gotta try and remember which one it was shift s all right so you can come down here and you can put you can move your cursor so you can put your cursor to the center which that's the center plane of the whole everything that's dead center that's your dead center of your x y and z's you can hit shift s move cursor to active which is right there on that part so now i can set this one back there Shift S. I can also move the selection to where I place the cursor by clicking uh, selection the cursor. I can move everything to the center of the grid by selecting the grid. Uh, but I'm going to go with uh, cursor to active. On this one, so Shift S, cursor to, nope, nope, that's not the right one. Click on this one, cursor to active. Click on this one, Shift, and not set origin, origin the 3D cursor. That's <laughs> I'm gonna have to redo this video. I drank entirely too much tonight. So now we've caught our two planes here. Um, so we're going to go in, skip that out, go over here to our UV image editor, and hit T, material selector. All right, so our top piece here, we want it to be edit mode, hit A. You can see that texture file that's on there. We're getting rid of that. Just hit X on that. Come over. I hit the wrong one. Smart UV Protect, 03, boom. Back to doing the same thing we've been doing. Uh, this one, I don't know if I'm going to make it, make the plow color selectable, but clicking color selectable, boom, or uh, painted metal, I meant. So boom, painted metal. It's done. Come down here, edit mode. Click this one, edit mode, highlight, scroll this back over. As you can see, it's got a mat. Get rid of that because I don't need that mat. Come over here, UV protect. There's all the parts. But I want this to be uh, silver scratched. All right. Slide that back over. Done with that. So now we've got our two things done. Another thing you can do is part stack. And part stacking is you can take your plow part and your part parts material. 
you can highlight both of them again. So parts, parts metal, plow parts, buy. Left click, shift, left click on the next one, and join. So that's how you can make it one piece in Blender instead of doing it on stacking in Giants Editor. Now, whenever you go into your editor, I should have left that up. I don't know if I have any parts on here that are double called. I think I do on this one. Um, I think I do on this one. That is a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Alright. We'll go... I think those are just parts, parts, parts. Reworking parts. We'll go back into here. Alright, so whenever you're setting up your color select and all that stuff, You're setting up your materials. We'll pick something easy. The bed. Alright, originally, before I started doing some rework stuff and changing a few things, I made all these pieces. So I made the bed. Which was just the outer skins. Bed details. Which was just the inner plane. The bed liner. And the sides. And then the bed rails. Which are bed details of one. They were all on the same. Uh, the same plane. Like I just made that blade. Where you come over here. And you click on your mat. Right here. And it would show. Instead of just one, it would show two or three. This one showed three. The only reason it's the way it is now is because whenever I conjoined it, I had those colors set black and black, and this was set as blue. The bed, the bed out, you know, the paint selection area was set to a blue color, and the bed details were damn near black they were like a gray color and this and the bed details 001 was set to a damn near gray color but i wanted them different colors here in uh blender or uh in ge for in the game so i'll show you see how they're different colors well this was straight up black and this was straight up black or this was dark gray and this was dark gray in GE or in Blender, and when I got in the GE, it only gave me one call color, so one material color, and it was all bed liner, bed liner, and bed liner. So it said body mat, bed liner, and and bed liner again, instead of saying I don't know what I named it, antenna, antenna mat. I put that on my antenna mat. Because it's the same color I wanted the antenna. And the same texture I wanted the antenna. So wh what happens whenever you stack them like that. If your colors aren't slid apart the way they need to be. You run into issues. And I can I can do a quick a quick uh, showing of that. Um, we'll pull this back up. And for sake of argument we'll go to edit mode real fast. We're going to select this body here. Hit P, selection. And then we're going to come down here to edit mode. And hide the road grader. Actually, we're going to, since I'm not saving this, I'm going to delete the road grader. Because all I want in GE are these three pieces. So now I've got this part. I'll come over here and I'll just kill that off right out the gate. Come through here. See all these colors that are stacked. 
get rid of all of them because I'm not using any of those. I'm going to make a new one called Bangalow. Bangalow.mat. I don't know why that just came to mind. Bangalow. And we're going to make it red. Because your, your matte colors, your main matte colors don't really matter outside of on your lights and stuff. On your glass. And that's only for uh, being able to see through it. That's the only thing you change there. You can be pink if you want it to be red. You can still be pink and still export it into the game and make it red. So The only thing you got to worry about is whenever you're making things transparent. And I went over that in the last video, I, I believe. So now I've got the arm that goes onto the rotator. Now normally I would make this its own part and this its own part. So this can spin on this. But I'm not, for sake of argument, I'm just stacking right now. So I'm going to take that. And I'm going to left click, or left shift, left click on file parts, hit join. Now they're all together. Actually, I'm going to hit Z and unjoin them because I forgot to do something. And, yep. I'm going to rename. Rename that part. Before you combine anything, you want to put your uh, material on it. So hit A. You can see that stupid backer came back. Come down here, hit X on that because I don't want it. Smart UV protect. And uh, for shits and giggles, we're going to make this galvanized metal. I've never messed with galvanized metal. I kind of want to see what it looks like. Okay, so now it's galvanized metal. So that mat's done, that mat's done, those are conjoined, this mat's done. It's now going to get left shift, click, left click on the plow parts, join. And now that's one complete unit, one solid thing. So we're going to come over here to file. The first thing I'll show you. See how we got three mats in here now? We've got three mats, three parts, all as one part. We're going to come over here, export, giant side 3D. That's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, it is. Real greater. Video stuff, 5.3D. Export. See how fast that exported? That's because there's not a whole lot there. You get a whole model in there, it's going to take a while. Alright, so I can close this one. It's no longer needed. I can open up. I can close this because it's no longer needed. I can open up this. <clears throat> and... Why did that... Did I put it... Where did I put that? There it is. Alright, video stuff. As you can see, this is... i got to re remove move all this around. We've got plow parts here. And it showed up all three colors. Or, you know, all three parts. All three different colors. So, come over here. We're going to click plow parts. Come down here, take rigid body off. I'll screw up and accidentally hit that. Let's put it back. I'll put it in the wrong spot. Let me put it down here. No, no, I had it right. Put it back up here. Modding while drunk. Not, or not, not drunk, but modding while drinking. Not the best idea. All right, so you see main body here. We're going to come down here, hit gloss map. Default specular. I've already got this set up to call out of a pile that I've got set up. So everything. My last call on GA goes right back to that spot. V 
vehicle shader. And we didn't put any dirt or anything on there. So now that's uh, main body mat, which will be this rotator and the plow itself. The top half of the plow. We'll go to silver mat, gloss mat. Default speculator because I don't want to have any dirt or anything on there right now. Default normal. Vehicle shader. And we'll come up here. And gloss map. Default. Normal. Vehicle shader. This is because I don't want dirt. Just for being able to see what uh, everything looks like. Um, visibility of the light. So we've got a cast. We've got a cast on there. So there you go. There's our uh, our colors and our textures. I really don't like that galvanized metal. It should should come up a little different. Let's go to our bagalo. And we're going to put it as color mask, which will make it just straight up silver. Huh. Well, I guess galvanized metal's not got anything spec special about it, other than it is a silver color. And then we'll come up here, main body mat. Um, you know, if you click color mask, it's just going to make it turn gray. So, gonna leave it to none. And we're gonna change the color in here to the color we want it to be. Now it should be the color we want it to be on that part. Click this again. Main body, our silver. And we wanna make it a little more silvery that didn't work i bet it went back to black there we go there we go and now our plow part down here is silver so that's how you can combine and everything on uh in blender and then export it to ge and do all kinds of stuff like that you don't want to make the whole model that way but a few pieces would be alright. You know, kind of like the plow. Putting them together like that. That's that's fine. But you don't want to put the, you know, everything as one piece. Um, let's say that's on color mask still. So we're going to go to none. And, you know, we can change the color. Any color we want here. I don't like that color. Let's say it was making it John Deere. You know, so you can come in and try and find your John Deere color. That's pretty close. Or, you can set it up to be called on the color selectable masks. And then just put in the color code for John Deere to call that part. And the yellow for John Deere to call the rest of the part. Now, obviously, that's not a. As far as I can tell, that isn't a John Deere road grader. But, I mean, it, I, I have to do some research to find out which road grader that's going to be. Uh, I should have grabbed these three pieces. They're the drive shafts and showed. How you can make rotation but uh, that'll be on a later video that's another reason why I'm doing this model in particular um, it's like my wheels if I wanted to I could conjoin this part with the wheel and then the tire and make it all one thing that way it's all nice and square and centered and all I gotta do is slap the whole wheel and tire assembly on there but you can't put tire deformation on the tire by doing that. So I just kind of avoid doing it. I've never 
I've never tried doing it with tire deformant deformita deformitation or however you say it, but um, I know the ways that work, and that's basically for me. Uh, there's several different ways. If you're doing some custom wheels and stuff like that, you want to do it a different way, but you could just click this set origin uh, center of, center of mass, and then you hit your wheel set origin center of mass. Then you hit tire set origin center of mass. I should put the, that dot right in the dead center of each one. And when you export it, you just got to kind of move them in and out and get to the right spots. That's the way you can do it. Or, oops, hit Z. Since I've already saved all this, I think I have. I'll just go ahead and save it again before I screw it all up for me. You can click your wheel. Uh, we'll do this wheel. And click your wheel. Shift S. And you can hit um, selection to center or selection to grid. If I remember right, click that. Shift S selection to grid. That should. Oh yeah, that's right because it's over there. All right, let's see. trying to remember how to do this. Okay, cursor to center of grid, and then set origin to uh, 3D cursor. No, that's not it. Boy, it's hard to make a tutorial when you can't remember which ones you do. Selection, it should be selection. Da, 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 da. Cursor to selection. Oh, all right. Well, I can't remember how to do it. <laughs> so uh, I'll just put origin to 3D. Origin to mass. And then we'll do these because they're already done before I forget. If they're complex wheels and stuff like that, and you're putting them in a uh, separate GE file, to import to the game the way everybody does is, or the way I've been showed to do it is after you've set your geometry uh, put selection to grid and I should put it didn't this is a weird model most of the time it actually works well I don't know why everything's not working working for me okay Cursor to center, shift S, cursor to center, yep, set origin to 3D cursor. I don't know why it's not working. But anyway, that's the way I do them. I put every, everything to the center. I haven't really worked out the bugs on uh, everything else yet. But another way to do it, set mass there, and then shift S, uh, cursor to active, click the next one, set origin to 3D cursor, set origin to 3D cursor. And I want to export that, that should be one, all in the same spot like exactly how it is right now whenever I export it should be but there you know blenders finicky like this I don't know what's going on with this particular model normally whenever you hit center to grid it, it'll throw it right there in the center maybe it's just because it's 2 30 in the morning uh, could be because I've been drinking I don't remember but uh, if I figure it out I'll, I'll update the video and like trash this one be like, hey, yeah, this is how you do it. Or make another video on how to do it. Uh, another thing I've done, just kind of a quick overall view. My cylinders. I'm going to make my cylinders move. So, 
as you can see, you can see the rod here. And I have not set my origins for anything yet. But I did resize this rod. The actual cylinder rod. So I'll pull that out. These were a lot shorter. They only came to right here. So I've actually made them longer. So whenever this goes down, the rods just don't disappear. And I've still got to figure out how to make everything animated where I need to put all my cursors, uh, my, my points for everything to move to make it look right. It's going to be painstaking to figure out where to put everything at to make it work and look correctly. But I have a ton of time to make sure everything's set right. Uh, the biggest challenge is going to be these three. Because that one, whenever these go up and down, that one's got to be able to go down as well. And then, I don't think I'm going to add a tilt function to the blade, but I might. If I make a tilt function to the blade, that'll be uh, one of the rams that's got to move, and then this ram's got to move, and this ram's got to move. All three have to move at the same time in different directions. <laughs> it's going to be a mother to figure out. So... I'm going to try it. This is kind of my test mule. I'm going to show in another video how to animate your drive shafts. So instead of having goofy ass drive shafts that don't move on lifted trucks, now you can actually see how to make your drive shafts move. So I'm going to do a video on that one for sure. But I have to finish cutting apart everything on this truck. Everything that's in gray has still not been touched or cut apart yet. As you can see, the headlights are hidden behind there. I've got to do all that. i got to do my UV mapping on everything still. I've got to... There's a lot of work left. So there's... This is going to be a big time project. So I'm... It's just kind of one of those that I'm working on whenever I'm bored. I just kind of want to cut and chop things apart. And uh, trying to relax talking with people on Discord and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so there's a, a video that was supposed to be short and sweet, which turned into long and, long and drawn out and confusing, I'm sure. But hopefully you get the gist of how to cut, separate, and re-add objects, how they work, and the other op what options there is to stacking, like the way I showed you on the 2020 Dodge, and the way I showed you on this one. So, hopefully everything, uh, you guys can figure it out. If not, let me know, and I'll make another video, because this one's not the best. Uh, it's going to be probably the worst one I've done. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Join my Facebook group, Cole's Customs FS19 Mods. Join in there. This is where I post a whole list of my videos to the YouTube page. Uh, it's where I post my released mods, my beta mods, the ones I'm working on still that aren't finished. But you know, I kind of wanted to release and like, get some input back on them. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. And uh, I'll catch you all on the next one.